Dr. Marcel Dvorak, our guest, he's a spine surgeon. He's a full professor at, at UBC and VGH and part of the Rick Hansen Institute director. Uh, what's going on there? What excites you yeah. about databases and communication right. as far as spine injury? Well, I remember when we used to go to meetings and we'd have a series of talks, and often the first talk would be about, you know, databases, mm -hmm. registries, collecting data, and, and that would immediately put everyone to sleep. And so it's, it's kind of remarkable that anyone's interested in it. But really, that is the holy grail. That is how we are going to make real improvements in patients' lives, is by collecting data on patients. And, you know, fortunately, spinal cord injury isn't as common as cancer and heart disease, right? right? But um, because of that, we're, we can't answer all the questions we want to answer just using patients at Vancouver General Hospital or BC or even just Canada. Mm -hmm. And so if we collect data, on all of our patients and collect it very carefully. And if we reach out to other groups in other countries so that we have collaborations in Australia and Brisbane, we have collaborations in Switzerland with a group in Switzerland, mm -hmm. collaborations in Israel, collaborations in England. If we collaborate with these surgeons who are also collecting data and then are able to bring our data sets together we can answer questions that no one could answer alone mm. without that sort of collaboration. Sure. Do you see a day when somebody will make a spinal cord? I can't imagine, but you know, like we have a pig valve yes. for the heart yeah. or you know, yeah. we have metal in our yeah. heads and yeah. all of that. Yes. Uh, it's not yeah. our real organ, somebody right. makes a new liver, we hope. Yes. But I how, see a day. do you see a day when you can Put like a plastic part, but what what happened with the nerves and the communication? You know, you know what? That's that's not that unheard of. I, I think there will be a day when there are maybe scaffolds that are built that enable mm. the nerves and channel the nerves to grow in a certain direction, grow in certain pathways, and bridge defects within the cord. Right. And even even in looking at at uh, grafting small bits of cord or small bits of nerve, mm. um, if you think of someone who's a high lesion quadriplegic who can't breathe, uh, and they have an injury, let's say at C two three, really the nerves only need to grow about an inch or so to get to C four to allow their diaphragm to move. Okay. So if you get this much nerve recovery, you can theoretically get someone breathing and off a ventilator mm. who's currently ventilator dependent mm. quadriplegic, mm -hmm. or get someone who can't move their hand but can move their arm to regain some hand function, which would have tremendous impact in the life of, of a course. quadriplegic. Sure, that, that regeneration. That regeneration Big. and having scaffolding or bridges that nerves can grow along, I think, is well within the realm mm -hmm. of possibility in the near future. When you were in med school mm -hmm. and learning how to do all of this, yes. uh, who did you operate on first? Uh, where do you start? Well, the, the training programs that we have are very, very good because we start from medical school in a very graded sort of preceptorship. So you're working with another surgeon your first few operations, you may be thrilled and come home and phone your mom and say, hey, I closed a wound, <laughs> right. I put in three stitches, mm -hmm. and that's, you think that's the end of the world. And then you, you know, with a surgeon at the other side of the table, you get to gradually do more and more and mm. more, and we're involved in a lot of that teaching. So it's just like on TV. It's a lot <laughs> like, like TV in TV. some ways, in, so in other some ways, ways not, not so much. <laughs> uh, same outfits, all of that, but it, you know, as you watch some of the uh, medical television shows, it's not they not quite house, not quite house, <laughs> no. not quite there. Uh, spine um, injury in general, or yes. spine um, uh, spines that aren't perfect, born that way, get that way. Yeah. You know, the, like everyone, right? Mm. You have people with uh, with different facial features, so you have spines that are built differently. Mm. And clearly, a spine with a smaller spinal canal is more prone to having problems. And so we, we see that in many different areas. So we see people with a little bit of arthritis, a few bone spurs. You know, when people get arthritic knuckles, they get right. some little bone spurs here and there. But in your spine, if those bone spurs are pushing in on an already smaller spinal canal, it can push on nerves, 
can cause sciatica down your legs. It can cause spinal stenosis, this symptom where people start walking and they get pain in their legs, mm -hmm. they have to hunch over. It can cause nerve pain in the arm. And then most seriously, it can sometimes cause a condition called myelopathy, where the spinal cord in the neck can be slowly squeezed by just arthritic changes or congenital problems. And, and people can lose their balance and essentially they have a non-traumatic spinal cord injury from the spinal cord being squeezed slowly. Okay, but a non-traumatic uh, spinal cord injury hurts, as you know. Yes. If you've ever had sciatica or oh, lower yeah. back pain or, or neck aches or oh, any yeah. of the above. So yes. if you keep your central nervous <clears throat> system healthy, does that help? Does it help to be a male or a female? I think uh, gender, we don't see a big difference in, in you know, the, the arthritic symptoms mm. or syndromes in, in, you know, between males and females. We, we do see a difference in people that remain fit and athletic. Mm. So that, I mean, if you get your heart rate up and your, your blood pressure up and get your heart pumping, uh, we think that a lot of that activity results in some of these bone spurs maybe, uh, maybe eroding away or melting away to some degree. Disc protrusions, for example, will 80% of them get better and they dissolve and, and they melt away. And I think they melt away better if you're athletic, if you're fit, mm. and if you remain active. Well, as you know, uh, in the olden days, once again, if yes. you had a, a lower back injury or yes. if your back hurt, the doctors put you to bed. Right. Now, some are saying, get up, exercise, move. It's better to move than to be uh, in bed icing and watching television. And the best example of that is that if you have a cold, and you know, if I spend a day in bed because I've got a, a man cold and I'm a bit of a wimp. Yes, you know, I know about man colds. I, I get up. They're way worse than way women worse, colds. Way worse. So are man flus. <laughs> That's right. But mm -hmm. the next day you get up and oh, your back's sore. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just because you've been in bed. So if your back's sore already, and then you treat that by staying in bed, you're probably going to make it worse. Now, you know, obviously. There's some injuries and other things that, that may need to be looked at, but the majority of mechanical back pain, even the majority of sciatic pain from mm -hmm. disc degeneration and disc herniation, majority of that is treated best with activity. Activity, diet? Diet is probably has something to do with it, but, but in the big picture. So that if, if I asked any of my patients with back pain to carry a 20 pound bag of flour around all day, mm -hmm. you know, they just say, I, I can't do that. Right. It'll make my back worse. Well. Oh, well, I had a bout with lower back. Don't know what it was. Yeah. It went away, never came back, but it was Perfect. terrible. It and is, it, it, yeah. Well, it's stressful, as you know. You hear it all the yes. time. Yeah. But one day I was, I was doing radio then, and tears were just kind of running down my yeah. face. I'm going, ow. There's nothing as no. bad as nerve pain. Nerve pain is something that people, they just, oh, and then mm -hmm. the spasm that you get, it's terrible. And it, probably one of, the, one of the most important things that I do is I explain to people what they have. And I say, you know what, this is terrible. We can give you some medications to make it feel better, but you've got a 90% right. chance of this getting better. On its, own, on its own, without me doing anything. One day you wake up and it's gone. You and say, you this say, is a good day. Thank God. And <laughs> even if you've been to the doctor and <laughs> yes. the osteopath and the acu acupuncture person and you're taking tinctures, doing whatever right. you can do, gin, <laughs> anything. <laughs> gin Just, works. <laughs> gin works, but it kind of relaxes, but it doesn't work in the morning. Right. That's a problem. Uh, back to uh, brain, spine, uh, phantom pain. Yes. I know many quads and, and paraplegics. Yes deal with these phantom pains. So that yeah. is the power of the brain, isn't it? Well, you don't have a leg or you, yeah, you yeah. can't feel your leg yeah. physically, but you still feel the pain. It's, it's one of the worst ironies. One of the most painful ironies that I see is people that are paralyzed can still have this mm. terrible pain. We call it neuropathic pain. That's just a way of saying it's pain from nerves mm -hmm. that we don't fully understand. And it can be horrific. Uh, so in a perfect world, if you could uh, wave the wand, yes. regeneration, what's the future of, spi of, of defeating spinal cord injury? Uh, not falling off your mountain bike, I yes. know, but what else? I think one of, the, one of the things that we can do is we can provide earlier treatment to more people. So okay. we can structure 
our healthcare system so that we can get people in quickly and provide them with care earlier. And I think that's going to make a big difference. Nerve pain, for example, neuropathic pain after spinal cord injury or even after disc problems or mm. degeneration, the earlier you get to the patient, the earlier you treat the pain, not necessarily with surgery, sometimes just medications, the less likely it'll be a problem at one and two years. But if, if the patient is delayed and has this pain and struggles with it for a year, two years, it's very difficult at that point to then sort mm. of reverse things. So, so don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Don't See, be male wimp. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. How oh, nice to meet you. Really nice meeting you. Thank Fanny. you. Thank you very much. Dr. Marcel Dvorak, he's a spine surgeon. Uh, he's with the Rick Hansen Institute, the director. Do you have an official title? Scientific director. Scientific director at the Rick Hansen Institute and a full professor at UBC.